If you're interested in generating the stress strain data from a simulation in Abacus, this is one of the ways that you can do it. And this particular method involves you volume averaging the parameter that you're looking over a defined cross section. So this is a, a tensile specimen. It's a type 1 ASCF D638 specimen that I've been created. So it's modeled based on a plastic, which is polypropylene in this case. So clearly what we want to do is to do a volume averaging around the gauge section of the sample. So clearly we'll go back to the part module right at the part and we're going to make a sketch on this face. So this is the face of interest and we click done. So we delete what was, and then we click on the edge here. All right, so somewhere around here, we know that the gauge section of this specimen is 50 um, cm. So I'm just going to, so okay, if minus 25 and 6.5 because it's so that's this point and then we'll go all the way to something again 25 and minus 6.5 so that's the section that we're interested in and then we click ok so that makes the partition so all we then need to do is just to extrude through that so we're going to press and hold here and then select that point so the source to partition will be definitely be this one and the edges that we want to use to partition is that edge and that edge. Okay, and then it said, what direction do we want? So we want this direction to be the way we're going to use. So we create the partition. So clearly now we see this uh, gauge section. So I can go back onto this set and then do my gauge section. So I'm going to be using this gauge section to track the properties that we're interested. So that's the gauge section of the specimen. Now. The next thing we need to do is to track certain history output because that's the basis upon which the volume averaging would work. So I double click on the history output. So I'm going to call it my gauge section history output. And this will be linked to the set that we just defined, which is the gauge section set. And because we're interested in behavior around the formation along the X axis, so I'm going to be tracking S11, which is the stress in the one X direction and the strain in the one one direction. If there are other things you want to volume average over, then you can track them, but we're just going to focus on those two. So we've got all that. Everything is set. So if we look at the fix, it's fixed at the back. And also in the front, we've got our tensile load. Okay, before we run that, we need to mesh the domain. So if I switch to the mesh, dependent parts. So some, so we click on that and accept what it's giving us. Clearly, what we want to use is the hexahedral sweep. So we work with the sweeping and then we can then mesh the domain. So it looks all right, and then we can submit. So the job is completed, and then let's look at the result. So we've got our result, everything looks okay. There is, and we can look at the animation, it looks all right. So now back to getting the, the stress strain data. So we're going to operate on this data, use the history output. Remember we requested for setting history output. So first thing we need to do is we need to take all the strain and volume average across them. So I'll click on the first strain and then go all the way to where the last strain value is and then press down shift and select that. And, and, tick. and then I could now save this as an average. So this is where the volume averages come. So I'll call it E11 volume averaging. Okay. So you could call it case one. And I don't want to plot the graph, I just want it noted. And then I'll do the same for this other one. So I press the first S11 data, go to the end, press down shift, select the last one and save that as well as an average. So this will be again case one, S11 volume average. Okay, so we've got all that done. Then the last thing to generate the data is to operate on this data. So if we want to operate on this data, we're going to use the combined option. So E11, S11 and then we can then plot the expression. So we can, it now generates the volume average data of stress and strain for this material. So if we then look at the data that is available here at the end there, so the very last data here, we can re rename that. So this will be case one, S11 versus E11. So we've got that data and we noted it. Then for the other ones, we can just go ahead and delete all of that. Okay, so we've got that. Then I can just remove these ones because they're not necessary. So basically we have our data which shows us our stress strain data for this case. But what other thing I wanted to do is to try a different situation. So let's say we have now a hole on the sample. So if you look at the second scenario where we have the same specimen, but it's got a hole in the middle. So what we want to do with this, can we just zoom into that region around the hole and see what we're getting in terms of just tracking the volume averaging around that. So basically like we did before, we'll partition this face 
okay and then click there so clearly we want to just zoom in around this hole and see what the effect would be just around that hole so i basically focus only on that to see you know what we narrow in into that hole as against the broader region that we worked with so again we click on that button we select this region that we want to use and the edges that we want to part to extrude with are those two and then click done and then extrude along the edge which is that edge and click ok create partition so we basically have that region of interest okay so let's create this a gauge section so um gauge section around the whole set so let's just call it that and then we we'll select that so that's fine and like we did before we we'll track a history output so you know the history output the gauge section around whole history output so let's use that and of course we'll go and use that and then we'll track the same s11 and e11 data like we did before and every other thing remains the same so we just create a load for that it's still a volume averaging process okay maybe before we do that let's just uh, mesh so we mesh the domain under this new scenario so of course so we mesh the domain under this new scenario okay so we can then just generate so okay let's probably use a different method so we we'll use the sweeping media axis minimize translation and then we can then go ahead and mesh so that gives us a smooth nicer show of the data okay we can then go ahead and submit the job okay so we finished so we can look at the results on this scenario okay so instantly we can see that because of the presence of the hole around the sample there is a stress concentration around that region and so when we isolate the region that we wanted which is this region then obviously we are picking up this stress strain behavior right in that gauge section this is really important because that way you can quantify the effect of stress strain of having a stress concentrator on your sample in terms of a stress strain behavior so let's go ahead and see what we can do in terms of generating the data so again it's a history output that we've tracked and so this gauge section so we'll pick on the first one slide until we get to the end and press down shift and select the last one and we save that as a volume average data so volume average no so let's call it case 2 um, e11 volume average okay so we've taken the volume average of that so what we can do is just go all the way to the end of this data and delete that okay so we've got case 2 so again we do the same go back to the data that we're looking for and get to the s11 data so we start from the s11 and go all the way to the end select that save it as remember you have to press shift to select everything at once so this will be case 2 s11 volume average data we don't want to plot the curves we just want to simply generate the data so so we've got the two of them there again every time it does that it creates temporary plots which we can always press down shift select all of them and delete them it's just to clear the workspace so that you have a clearer data that you're working with so basically those are those two so we can then operate on that data and that will require the combine option so s11 and e11 for this case two case plot the expression and then we have the data so i can rename this data and basically call it case 2 s11 versus e11 so which is our stress strain data okay so again the subset we don't need them because we can just go ahead and remove them from the space so okay so now we have two cases one where there is no stress concentrator so we plot that so we have that and now the second case where we have a stress concentrator we add it to the plot okay so you can see instantly what is happening so now with the stress concentrator in the case two case is causing a reduction is too narrow a behavior and there is a lot of variability in terms of distribution of the data there so you end up having this case two appearing this way and then the case one appearing that way there's a more finite deformation in terms of case two localized information and you end up with this kind of information all the time because what's what's really happening here is, is that the influence of that stress concentrator is changing the behavior of the polymer so if you look at here so basically what we have done here is to 
even out what's going around around there. So you can see there are some regions that are green, which is quite low. There are some regions that are purple, like orange, which is quite low. So there's a lot going on in that region. And so when you volume average the behavior in that region, it significantly pushes down the behavior of the system. And that's why we are getting the result we are getting. So the implication of that is that if you want to then do a volume average, and it makes sense, especially when you have a system that looks that doesn't look correct like that it makes sense to volume average over a wider region so that this localization effect will not exist there so we can try and will not exit there so we can you can go and try it out and just narrow widen out the region of interest and generate your result and everything will be fine so that's all i wanted to show in this video if you like this kind of content please do subscribe to this channel so when contests like this are made you'll be the first to see it and then please do leave me a comment of what you think about this or any kind of video ideas that you want me to make a video on i'll be happy to make them if you want to see other approaches of doing this you know all in one video then look at this video where i show you how you can generate stress trend data using three approaches thank you for your interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye